Well, thank you again, Jimmy, for uh, spending time with Leslie and I. And uh, I'd like to close the interviews that, uh, on our site with what I call my weird question. And last time, you had this amazing answer that still, I've got some that have come close, but nobody has topped that story. Do you have another interesting, weird, wonderful uh, little anecdote for us? Well, the audience is probably not going to believe this story, but, okay, here goes. As you know, my dad was a mortician, right? Right. And over the, his lifetime, he told me some pretty amazing things. The one that comes to mind is a kind of, the only way I can describe it is a kind of a voodoo spell that you're talking. And it's a spell that you use when you're desperate and you're in need of immediate cash. Uh, I don't recommend that anyone do this, mm -hmm. and I highly recommend that you don't, but what you do is you, if you're desperate for cash, you write a letter to a recently dead relative, and you ask for a lump sum of money. For some reason that money, that lump sum is always $3,500. You seal it in the letter, you place it underneath the glass of water, and then you place the letter and the glass of water underneath the area where your head will be that night while you're sleeping, underneath the bed, Right. okay? Um, right where your head is gonna be. That night, uh, where then three days after you do that, you'll get the money, Right. guaranteed. But you're gonna pay a horrible price for it. That night, wherever your worst fear is, it will be manifest as a nightmare that for you will not seem like a dream, but will seem totally real. And uh, I guarantee you'll, you will wake up the next morning screaming in a cold sweat, okay? That's the price you pay, but then you'll get the money. Now my father, who was a mortician, his greatest nightmare was to be embalmed alive. Uh -huh. And that's what he felt, he felt every pain of being embalmed alive. He couldn't shout, he couldn't move, he was totally incapacitated, but he felt every ounce of pain from the embalming process. Now I'm not gonna tell you what my greatest fear is, but you gotta remember that my father was a mortician. I grew up in the funeral home at the age of four. Right. Um, and I'm a Vietnam veteran. So you can just imagine what my nightmare would be. I'd rather not, Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> that would be wise. So I'm not going to tell anybody with that. I've never told anyone. I'm not mm -hmm. going to tell them here because, one, I don't want to unleash that kind of horror on the world. Right. And God forbid some movie producer thinks he can take this nightmare of mine and turn it into a movie. I don't want that responsibility. Right. So I'm never going to share what my nightmare was. But... Uh, it nearly scarred me permanently. Yeah. But I got the money. Okay. <laughs> a small price to pay. Well, yeah. maybe not so small. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was definitely weird. <laughs> um, before we go, do you have any uh, website, uh, Facebook, other information you'd like to impart to the viewers? Yeah, you, our website, thecryptohistorians.com. Our Facebook page, uh, we, uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, we're going to have a brand new cinema quality teaser trailer coming out before, as I said before. And I think people are going to be absolutely amazed about what we were able to accomplish with absolutely no money. I mean, I literally paid for this teaser trailer with soda, beer, and pizza for the crew. Awesome. And what are you going to be filming about next? I think we're going to probably film this in a couple of a uh, couple of weeks. Couple of and weeks. then we'll edit it, get it out there, and uh, that's what when I'm going to pull the trigger on the Kickstarter campaign. Awesome, awesome, very cool. And it's the T H E Crypto Historians with C hyphen the Crypto hyphen Historians. Okay. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank and you so from much. From Video Symphony. And how about you tell a little bit about the Video Symphony uh, studio that we're at? Well, I'm going to the school here at Video Symphony School of Post-Production because uh, I re realized that um, not being able to edit my stuff is my 
greatest impediment mm -hmm. to success because, I mean, I've had stuff sit in the can for seven months because I had to go begging hat in hand to get someone to edit my material, okay? So I decided that I would go to school myself, learn the craft of editing, not so much to be a hired gun for someone else, but so that I could uh, interface with my staff and create the kind of uh, material that I wanted to create. And uh, you know, there's, there's a saying, there's the movie you write, the movie you film, and the movie you edit. And I have learned that that is really, really true. Mm -hmm. Now I always thought that the writer was the most important person in the creative process. But this has really given me uh, a new perspective on the collaborative nature of filmmaking. Very cool. Well, from Video Symphony uh, School of uh, Post-Production, this has been The Weird Review with Jimmy Dix. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Thank you very much.